Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam and this is a series of uh, lectures on your heart so let us begin with the feature presentation today and that is going to be uh, what are the right questions you should be asking your cardiac surgeon if you have been recommended to have coronary artery bypass surgery you can follow my white arrow here coronary artery bypass surgery or cabbage or cab as it is called first i'm going to give you a overview of what coronary artery bypass surgery is and what happens in the hospital then we're going to start with a series of questions you should be asking your cardiologist and your cardiac surgeon and the nurses about the whole procedure the process the time intervals and what you need to do after the surgery so let us begin with an introduction i am dr nick nickam i have been a cardiologist for 40 years uh, i am so privileged to have worked with some, some of the finest cardiac surgeons in the world including denton cooley michael debakey david art and livese at the texas medical center and i am truly indebted to these surgeons i have watched them do heart surgery in the operating rooms and I have seen them as human beings, as individuals, as doctors and exercising the greatest medical judgment and patience. So let us continue with the main feature presentation. Coronary artery bypass surgery is basically if you have a blockage in the artery in the coronary artery segment, then we take a vein from the leg, we attach it to the aorta and then bring this vein beyond this blockage to re-establish the circulation. That is the simplistic example description of a coronary artery bypass surgery. More and more recently, we are using the internal mammary artery coming in the chest wall, and that is dissected and connected to the artery in the front of the heart as we open the chest. And that internal mammary artery is supposed to have 95 to 97 percent patency rate uh, after several years. That's one of the reasons we use the artery because the internal mammary artery is about the same size as the coronary artery itself, or maybe slightly bigger, but uh, it it lasts longer compared to the vein grafts. And similarly, we could use the right internal mammary artery to bypass some arteries on the right side. And occasionally, they may take a, they may take a, a artery from an arm and attach it to the arteries beyond the blockage. And you have heard the term single bypass, double bypass, triple bypass, quadruple bypass, bypass quintuple bypass. <laughs> Basically, it simply means it's a single vessel bypass, double vessel, Triple means triple, quadruple means four bypasses, one, two, three, four. Sometimes these are known as the jump grafts. You bring in a main artery, then you divide that into two branches and you connect it to two arteries beyond the blockage. Of course, it takes longer time to do a quadruple bypass compared to a single or a double vessel bypass surgery. But nonetheless, heart surgery is heart surgery. They have to crack open your chest, they spread the chest across, then you have to go on a heart-lung machine. The heart is completely rested, and it is during this time, one of the other surgeon's assistants will be removing the vein from the leg, they are, and they will dissect the artery in the chest wall and connect it to the artery beyond the blockage in the front, and these vein grafts are connected to the other side branches that are having blockages. Generally speaking, in the present day where we can put stents in one, two or three vessels, the chances of someone going for a single or a double bypass is not very common as it used to be. Usually they end up going for quad triple or quadruple bypass and that's after they had like 10 or 12 stents. So the complexity of surgery has changed great deal in the last decade or two decades compared to when I started in the 1980s, even a person with a single vessel artery needed a bypass surgery because we didn't have stents in, in the early stages of uh, my practice. Okay, this is how the chest bone is 
literally cut with the saw and then the two ends are spread together so we can see the heart here and here's the internal mammary artery that is being dissected to connect to the front of the heart muscle and here's the right coronary artery and this is the right coronary artery and these are the plaques uh, which are building up the artery and as I said you go on a heart lung machine and here is uh, the one I was talking about taking out the artery from the if you run out of veins then we have to use the artery from the arms to do the bypass surgery like as it is shown here the artery is connected to the aorta and then to a side branch here on the left side and these are known as the saphenous venous grafts because they are taken from the saphenous vein in your leg that's why you may see a long scar in your leg after the surgery of course after the heart surgery you're going to have one single midline scar in in the chest which will be like a thin line when it's completely healed without any scarring or keloids now here is a picture showing a, a right internal mammary artery connected to the right coronary artery we have a vein graft connected to the left anterior descending branch and here's a lima that is connected to the left anterior descending branch and here is a rima or the right internal mammary artery connected to the right side with a vein graft so these are all different terminologies if you have an arterial segment connecting then the chances of that staying open are longer compared to the vein grafts and I will talk about that uh, duration in a minute once you come out of the operating room this is how it's going to look it's going to look pretty scary but I spent decades working in the intensive care unit at the Texas uh, St. Luke's Hospital Medical Center St. Luke's Hospital and this is how we see we have blood going through we have IVs running through these patients there's a respirator there's a suction tube there's a tube in your throat there's a tube in your nose and there is a monitor connected here you're connected to a, a ventilator you have multiple IV lines and may also have a Foley catheter but don't let that scare you because we are looking at the vital signs the heart rate the blood pressure the oxygen level, the pressures in the heart chambers, urine output, temperature, blood, all these things. So we are meticulous, like a pilot, we are meticulously monitoring everything minute by minute because sometimes the blood pressure can change immediately or sometimes there could be significant bleeding and sometimes we may have to take these patients back to surgery to stop the bleeding if they have been bleeding in the chest cavity. So there are a lot of things uh, moving things happening on a, on a continuous basis that keeps the doctors, nurses, the respiratory therapists and the technicians on toes 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the cardiac intensive care unit. It is a great experience, something which not everyone is privileged to have. I had the pleasure of managing thousands of cardiac surgery patients with surgeons like David Ott, Livesey, Dr. Denton Cooley and also DeBakey. And once you are in the intensive care unit, generally for like two to three days, if everything goes all right, unless you have a very weak heart muscle and heart failure and drop in blood pressure, where you are on a lot of uh, medications to support your blood pressure, generally you should be back on a regular room within like two to three days. So most of the tubes have come out, but you still have this little dressing in the chest. Uh, at least your family members can visit you and, and look at... Uh, your smile I mean that's not going to be a real big smile to start with but uh, something is better than nothing within like three four days you will be up and around walking in the on the floor and then you start to begin the slow cardiac rehabilitation and generally speaking you may be in the hospital anywhere from three to seven days or six days most people are able to go home by five days and when you come home you try to recover you're going to having this little breathing tube to keep your lungs expanded all the time to prevent any development of atelectasis or congestion in the lungs so that can cause infection and watch for any infection in the legs where they took out the vein then you start gradually walking by three months you should be able to return to your follow-up walking by yourself with little assistance from your family members and three months later you will be back to playing all your tricks 
dirty tricks and laughing about your heart surgery. Oh, how long was your incision? Mine was six inches. Oh, I got a nine inches incision. Oh man, I told them to put a tattoo here, what looked like a, like a zipper. In fact, I had one patient who had a zipper tattooed on his uh, incision area and he called it, I have been zippered at the medical center. <laughs> Whatever the fancy is yours. Anyway, so now let us begin with the real question answer session about uh, what is coronary artery bypass surgery, which I talked to you already. And these are the questions you should be asking your cardiologist, your cardiac surgeon, your nurse uh, coordinator who is, is setting up all these things. Because there are a lot of things you are hesitant to ask a surgeon. You can't ask a surgeon, how many people have you killed by doing heart surgery? That's the worst thing you can, I mean, I shouldn't even say this one. Anyway, what is your success rate? What is the mortality? What is the success rate of uh, bypass grafts? All these things we need to be asking. So let's go through some of these questions in a very, very logical manner. Explain to me the bypass surgery. You sit down, it's most likely one of these uh, heart surgery nurses or coordinators, they may have a video, they may just sit down and show you some pictures or a booklet and explain to you. Have them explain to you. If they don't, tell them to explain to you. And uh, how long does the heart surgery take? Generally, the heart surgery takes anywhere from four to six hours. The surgeons I work with, like David Ott and Livesey, they were very quick and very swift, and they were able to do a triple bypass in like two and a half to three and a half to four hours. How many bypasses do I need? That's an important question you should be asking. As I said, most of the time we do not send people for a single artery bypass if that can be treated with a stent or even do two arteries or even three arteries. If we can adequately treat them with stents, that's the first thing we would like to try because heart surgery is a major, major physical challenge to anybody going through that one compared to having a cardiac catheterization and stents. How many days will I be in the ICU? Partially I answered this question. It could be one day, two day, or it could be three days. It depends upon you know, how quickly you recover, how is your heart function, and how your body responds to all the such stress from the surgery. How many days will I be in the hospital? Three to five days on the regular floor, and you will be up and around walking within the third or the fourth day. So you'll be pacing around with a little pillow holding here, here saying, my heart, it looks like a heart, like a Valentine sign. And you will be walking around talking, joking with the other heart surgery patients. And of course the nurses, when do I get to go home? When your heart surgeon and the cardiologist decide, which is generally three to five days after you have been on, on the regular floor. How many days will I be in the hospital? Average three to seven days altogether. When do you get to go home? When you're ready to go home. <laughs> that is, we want to make sure there's no sign of infection, there's no irregular heart rhythms, there's no fluid overload. You get a, anywhere from five to six liters of salt during surgery. And all of this extra fluid has to be removed from your system. Otherwise, you're going to look bloated, bloated, bloated. <laughs> So that has to be taken care of. Irregular heart rhythms have to be controlled. Then make sure you don't have any sign of infection. Make sure you don't have any sign of pneumonia or any stomach problems or any damage to your kidneys because surgery can do a lot of different things. So we follow all these things meticulously, make sure that all the systems are functioning normally, back to normal. What medications? Generally speaking, you're gonna be on aspirin a day. They may put you on Plavix. Of course, you're gonna be on medications to control your heart rate. You're gonna be on cholesterol medicine. You're gonna be on any medications you need for blood pressure, diabetes, or any other medical conditions you had before you came to the hospital. And okay, I talked about blood thinners. You generally don't need a heavy duty blood thinner like warfarin for a bypass surgery. Cardiac rehabilitation. Most places where they do heart surgery, they do have inpatient and outpatient cardiac rehabilitation that's going to be determined by your cardiologist as to you know how you enroll in this cardiac rehabilitation program 
It is uh, usually a six to eight week program where you are trained in a progressive manner to increase your aerobic exercises. I said aerobic exercises, not isometric contraction, which increases the strain on your muscles, increases your blood pressure and increases the strain on your heart. So basically walking, brisk walking, some climbing stairs, things like that. How long does it take to completely recover? Well, by the time you were told that you need surgery and by the time you go to the park, play with the ball and make jokes about your heart surgery, we are talking about anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks. How often do I need the heart surgery? I hope you don't need to ask this question. But occasionally, I had people who had heart surgery and a week later, all the three grafts blocked off for some reason because this person had some coagulation problem. As a result, this person had to go back for surgery and do another set of bypasses. And that's like only one case I have seen in my entire practice. So that tells you how often that happens. Very rarely, people may have to go back for surgery for uh, bypass surgery or maybe for some complications. Like if there's a sternal wound infection, they may have to go and debris the wound and sometimes they may have to take out the sternum and just close the chest wall with the skin and muscles. What happens if I still have chest pain? This, this is a very good question. Remember that not every procedure is 100% cure for what, for the reason we are doing this. But sometimes there may be smaller branches which may not be bypassed. Uh, there may be some blockage that was missed in the initial stages that because we couldn't see it. It's not that we missed it. We couldn't see it. And later on, it may become apparent when we do a stress test. And if the pain contains, it may be controlled with medications. Because you had the major bypass surgeries, which is supposed to improve your quality of life. It is supposed to prolong your life. And the main thing is controlling symptoms. We can do that with medications. Or if there is a significant area of the heart muscle decrease, with decreased blood supply, we can put a stent. What are the chances of infection? Infection is always a concern no matter what surgery you go for. Especially when the leg vein is removed from the leg with a long incision, you see some woozing, some redness, or some like a bruising. And that can usually be controlled with just tropical antibiotics and it usually dries up. As we, as we get rid of the excess fluid, the stretching of the skin is taken away and, and the skin becomes normal with time. What is the surgical risk? Yes, you need to be asking this. You know, What is my surgical risk? The mortality from coronary artery bypass surgery is like 1% to 2%. It is much less than going for any other kind of surgery, major surgery, because the sur cardiac surgery has been so well perfected that the risk is extremely low because we have a great way to preserve the myocardium during surgery and we have excellent monitoring techniques. We have TEE to monitor the heart chamber pressures. So we have so many parameters available to constantly monitor heart function and maintain the status during and after surgery. Okay, how long does it take to completely recover? As I said, three months, take it or leave it. Uh, take uh, three months approximately. So the success rate, uh, as I said, uh, let's talk about the success rate of the bypass grafts. Interestingly enough, 15% of the bypass grafts clog off by the end of one year. And by about seven or eight years, 50% of the brain grafts clog off. But still, patients remain asymptomatic. It's kind of hard to explain how you have blocked vein grafts and you're still not having any symptoms. Maybe it helps to develop collaterals because you're involved in the exercise program, you're doing cardiac rehabilitation, you're redesigning your life, you change your lifestyle, and all those things may play a role in reducing your symptoms. Um, I mean, it, it's appropriate to ask, you know, how many surgeons have you done, how many surgeries have you done, and what is your success rate? Uh, the best thing is to talk to the coordinator who can provide you with all these statistics. And a lot of these statistics are on public sites where you can get the information about the surgeons 
So number of surgeries done, number of uh, surgery, successful surgeries and things like that. The potential complications of uh, surgery are of course uh, infection, which is the most common one, or sometimes we can get irregular heart rhythms where we may have to shock the person. Some people can get a heart attack during the procedure for a, any number of causes. Uh, sometimes the heart function is so weak, we may have to put them on so many drugs to keep the heart blood pressure under control and to keep the heart functioning and that's where we have like a more complications and if the blood pressure drops people have bleeding and if that can lead to kidney failure so those are very rare complications as i said the mortality is about one percent and most of the people go home like 99 percent of the time people go home and there may be some minor problems like irregular heart rhythms, most of which can be controlled with medications. When can I return to work? I would say 8 to 12 weeks may be a reasonable time and that's when you probably would try to resume driving. People want to start driving one week after heart surgery. Think about it. You have an incision in your chest and these are put together with sternal wires, steel wires. The steel wires are holding your bone. It takes six to eight weeks for the bone to completely heal. And then you want to use your steering wheel like this. Man, that's not a good idea. So you just follow your surgeon and the cardiologist's advice. And when they tell you you can drive, then you should be trying. Because take it easy. You, you, you lived all your life like you wanted to. And that's why you are here having heart surgery. Now it's time to listen to the experts. Can I resume sex? This is a million dollar question. If we are cardiologists or surgeon, don't answer this. Find somebody else. <laughs> well, this is a very important uh, question. Generally, you know, you want to avoid sex for six to eight weeks. And for the same reasons I talked about driving. Because when you move your chest wall vigorously, it can cause a, like a disruption in the sternal healing. So you want to avoid moving your chest very excessively during the first six to eight weeks until you have a complete healing. And how often do I need to follow up? You usually see the surgeon a week or two weeks later. You follow up with your cardiologist every three months. This is where your part of this cardiac journey begins. Modifying the risk factors, changing your lifestyles, getting your weight under control, reducing your carbohydrates, getting your blood pressure under control, and decreasing your cholesterol levels, taking the medications regularly, vigor religiously going on an exercise program, and you need to get in shape because it is your life, only you can change it because the surgeon's work is done, the cardiologist's work is done, and you're the one who are living in that body for the rest of your life, and you need to be in the driver's seat when it comes to lifestyle modifications. Do you really want to ask me about smoking after you had a heart surgery? In fact, a patient of me asked, hey doc, can I get a prescription for some cigarettes? This young nurse says I can't smoke any cigarettes. I said, you must be out of your brain. You, you just had your heart surgery two days ago and you want a prescription for cigarettes? I'm not going to write any prescription for cigarettes. I could lose my license if I write a prescription for cigarettes. And the patient said, in that case, I'm going to roll them all your doctor bills and start smoking. <laughs> and the nurse said, well, you'll be smoking that for a long time. Well, that's a joke. Anyway, so we talked about sex, follow-up, and vein grafts last, as I said, at the end of one year, 85% of them are still 85% of them are still wide open. So that's the good news. Will I need more bypasses in the future? Hopefully not, because when we decide to do a bypass surgery, like that's like the last effort before we do the stents and medical treatment and all these other things. And when those things don't work, we decide surgery. When we decide surgery, we try to revascularize as much as possible. And it is, do I need a stents in the future? It's possible. If the vein grafts block off, which is not uncommon, as I told you, 15% of the veins block off by the end of one year and it gets progressively worse with e each year, then we may go and clean up that vein and put a stent. 
Are there alternatives to bypass surgery? Of course, you can take medications and you're going to have symptoms and uh, your, your disease is going to progress. I don't know if that is going to, something you want to live with it. If you have critical blockages in the main arteries, like the left main or the left anterior descending artery, your survival rate is much better with bypass surgery if you need triple vessel bypass compared to medical treatment. So there are alternatives, but the, the results are going to be different. Do I require blood transfusion? More often than not, you do require blood transfusion. We had, we had Jehovah Jeho witnesses who refused to take the blood, and one of them had like hemoglobin level of four grams per cent. He went through the surgery and he recovered. It's going to take a long time to recover when you don't get blood transfusion, but if their religious belief prevents them from getting blood, we have done surgeries on such patients, and they have come out all right. How well the blood is screened? You know, we heard about people go for heart surgery, they end up with HIV, hepatitis, all these things. Today, the blood is screened so well, the chances of someone getting hepatitis or HIV following heart surgery is almost unheard of. Need more bypasses in the future? Depends upon, if you have multiple risk factors, if you have a, like a progressive coronary artery disease and you develop more and more blockages, chances are you could. I had people who had went to bypass surgery for the second time. And that is extremely rare. How soon can I drive? I told you about that. And you need to be on a regular exercise program. And that's something your cardiologist can recommend based upon your overall condition, your weight, your blood pressure, your sugar level, your exercise tolerance, the heart function, and all these things have to be taken into consideration. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very quick overview of what is a coronary artery bypass surgery, how a coronary artery bypass surgery is done, how long it takes, how many days you'll be in the intensive care unit, how many days you'll be on the floor, how long it takes to recover completely, and what lifestyle modifications you have to do after heart surgery. I hope this has been educational to you and hopefully all these questions will help to alleviate, most importantly, your anxiety and apprehension about a coronary artery bypass surgery. As I said, I had the pleasure of working with some of the finest cardiac surgeons here at the Texas Medical Center. That's why I'm able to produce this uh, presentation like it is a second thought because I have lived through the, this experience. Thank you so much and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a series of lectures on patient education with regard to your heart. I'll see you in the next video.